Chef Ramsay might scream, yell, and even take some really nasty digs at you. But when it comes to giving a motivational boost, there is nobody who could do it better than him. Just like what happened with this contestant, get your tissues ready because you're going to need them. I've made thousands. Everybody made mistakes, okay? But you just need to bounce back. Here was the maestro, the god of the culinary world, revealing that he's not infallible. This revelation transformed him from a distant authority into a relatable mentor, a beacon of hope and encouragement for Kaya, and perhaps for all of us. I love this moment because it reminds us that even the grandest of achievements have their roots in imperfection. And well, it's the journey of learning and growth that truly defines us. But let's get down to what led to this heartwarming moment. Let's recap a bit, shall we? So, after the service wrapped up in the 14th episode of season 20, there was this touching moment between Chef Ramsay and Kaya. He approached Kaya and asked her about that breakdown she had after making just one little mistake. He didn't come down on her like a ton of bricks, instead, he showed her his softer side. He told her straight up, everyone, even himself, trips up now and then. It's not about the fall, it's about how you get back up. Kaya must have really been feeling the pressure like a true perfectionist. Man, I can relate. But it was truly tough seeing her beat herself up like that over one slip. Chef Ramsay sent her off to grab some water in the back storeroom, but man, things escalated quickly. When Kaya went through that moment of hyperventilation during that tough breakdown, you could practically feel the weight of her anxiety hanging in the air. Watching her struggle like that, it hit me, you know? It wasn't just some TV drama, it was some real life emotion playing out on screen. This is a reminder that the kitchen's pressure isn't just about the dishes, it's about the chefs too, the real people behind the aprons. <sighs> Kaya's anxiety wasn't just a random hiccup, it was a sign of how intense stress can really mess with our heads. This moment truly underlines why talking about mental health is so darn important. There it is. Let it out, bud. Really angry. And you know, it wasn't just a simple there there moment. Sous chef Christina had this incredible knack for saying just the right things at the right time. And don't you dare show this kind of weakness in front of these guys. It's a competition. I'm willing to bet the less than two minutes we saw on TV was just the tip of the iceberg. They had to trim down this heartwarming interaction to fit the show's runtime, right? This is what makes sous chef Christina the best winner of all time in my eyes. She was incredibly reliable, compassionate, and had amazing leadership skills. And if you haven't watched this video of her, I insist that you do. But there's no denying that Chef Ramsay's got a soft spot, you know? He's all about contestants who keep it real, who aren't trying to put on some fake fancy act. Case in point, Julia Williams. Before diving into the Hell's Kitchen mayhem, she was working at a Waffle House. Now, some of her red team pals thought she couldn't cut it, throwing some shade because she wasn't coming from some swanky fine dining restaurant. They kept hammering on it like a broken record. But Julia, for her credit, didn't go around pretending to know everything about Wellingtons and Lobster. Sure, sure, she didn't have a ritzy background, but she owned her Waffle House background loud and proud. And guess what? That honesty, that grit, it paid off big time. She hustled, she climbed, and BAM, she cracked the top four. She proved her strength, earned a black jacket, outlasting a bunch of doubters she had on her team. Despite her elimination, Chef Ramsay went above and beyond to show how much he appreciated her talents. You have an exceptional amount of talent. He also invited her to come back and compete on the show again, which is impressive, right? Because there's something quite amazing about you. Thank you. I am very proud of you. Those are some of the most important words we crave to hear, whether it's coming from our parents or mentors, right? Telling someone you're proud of them is a way of recognizing their worth as a person, affirming that they're capable of creating a positive impact and contributing to something greater. And Julia more than earned that appreciation. Seeing folks who've come from humble beginnings being handed that golden opportunity to shine and refine their skills is a real tearjerker. I mean, imagine the feeling when someone who didn't start with much gets that chance to grow and glow. This really takes me back to this moment right here. He cared where I came from and none of that. All he cared about was my food. Seeing Millie achieve such heights in life, rising from humble beginnings, fills our hearts with genuine happiness and admiration. This is one of my favorite moments when he bared his heart, sharing how food has been his first taste of love, a connection he longed for, a connection he only found in the kitchen. I never knew what love was. Food is actually the only thing I get my 100% back. As Chef Ramsay praised Millie's passion, you couldn't help but feel the weight of his journey. Millie's path hadn't been an easy one. 
he had faced homelessness. It's like food became his lifeline, his comfort, and his way of healing. Food for him was more than just sustenance, it was a language of love that he had been deprived of for so long. The struggles he'd weathered, the hunger he'd endured, they gave him a strength that shone through his every decision. People don't understand how real it is when you can't run back to your mom or you can't run back to the family house. Potential isn't confined to degrees or pedigrees. It's about the fire within, the willingness to learn, and the resilience to forge ahead. And, well, Chef Ramsay made sure that Millie never felt insecure about his lack of polished experience. You underestimate yourself. You can cook. Yes, Chef. You put up some bloody good food. As you may know, he was offered to train and improve his skills for a week in London and is now working at Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill in Atlantic City. Now, fathers play a vital role in providing a sense of security, both emotionally, financially, and physically. However, the absence of this nurturing bond during our formative years can leave an unfathomable void. It can leave a wound that cuts us so deep and can affect us in ways we hardly comprehend. The emotional scars of growing up without this form of support can linger, impacting our self-esteem, relationships, and overall well-being. For Millie, who had perhaps never experienced someone having his back in quite that way, Chef Ramsay's unwavering support must have been akin to finding a long-lost compass. And, well, it was so wholesome to witness how overwhelmed with gratitude he was. Like a father figure, like, to me, and nothing in between. I love you, and I appreciate you. Speaking of heartwarming moments, whenever I see contestants reunited with their families, I choke up a little bit. But this one was truly special. <laughs> your wife Tiffany, and your son Gavin. I love you. Scott was just the sweetest, wasn't he? You could really tell how much he'd missed them. That photo of his family by his bedside wasn't just a picture, it was a piece of his heart that he kept really close by. You could just hear the ache and yearning in his voice. Having to say goodbye to my kids is probably the hardest. Plus, aren't those kids just adorable? Who could stay away from them? I don't blame Scott for tearing up. Now, it's hard to forget Joy's little meltdown over the undercooked pork during the budget challenge. It's not even done. It's not done. The meat isn't even done. And, well, it's Scott who swoops in with that heartwarming hug. You can practically feel the camaraderie, the support radiating from him. It's like a reminder that in the midst of this challenge, amidst this rivalry, there's still room for compassion and kindness. I feel bad for Joy. She was definitely emotional about her pork. There's a quote that goes, Leadership is all about emotional intelligence. Management is taught, while leadership is experienced. And Scott proved that he could take charge of a brigade. Many people perceive compassion and kindness as weakness, but then there are people like Scott who prove them wrong. You it's, it's about looking out for your team, even if you're in the competition against them. It's okay. I'm done. No, 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 come on. It's okay. Come on, let's go. Get it together. Yeah, I couldn't forget about this, could I? Could you imagine? We would have missed a whole season of Petroza because he was seriously contemplating giving up. Aren't you wondering why? because he got sent back to the dorms after he couldn't nail down the menu. All thanks to Bobby, who headed over like a true buddy, to bring some comfort and a pep talk. Petroza, all of a sudden, started getting all emotional, and, well, Bobby, he handed over his apron to dab his teary eyes. That moment allowed us to see their incredible bond, a brotherhood, shine through even in the heat of the competition. It was like saying, hey, we're rivals, but we're also in this together. But here comes a moment that made every single person, despite which team they belong to, ball their eyes out. Let that be a reminder of what you've achieved in this competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Man, Sterling's elimination was a tough pill to swallow. Rarely do you come across a guy as friendly and warm as him. You could see it in the faces of the other contestants. They were feeling the same punch in the gut. That tells you what kind of angel Sterling was, right? Even in that moment, he carried himself with such grace and poise. It's one of those moments where I'd protect Sterling at all costs. I mean, just declare this man a national treasure already. While I was looking through Reddit, I found several users singing praises for the man. Most of them spoke about how positive and polite he was, while at the same time, being funny as hell. Some of them even named him as their favorite non-winner contestant from the show. If you want to know what Mr. 100 is up to nowadays, make sure to check this out right here. And hey, I also found this article which spoke about Sterling giving his bone marrow to an 18-year-old at Georgetown University. What a hero! Well, that's my man Sterling being amazing as always. Probably the only beef he had was with Bryant. 
but the latter chose him on his team during the finale. Now, here's where it gets super sweet. Sterling, the kind of guy who wears his heart on his sleeve, gets totally surprised by this move. And what exactly does he do? <laughs> In a world where guys are conditioned to shy away from showing affection, we love to see such bromance, don't we? Speaking of which, we've seen all kinds of relationships brewing up on the show. But this one was truly moving. After the red team lost the scallop cleaning challenge, Lacey doubted her place in the team, but someone was there to talk her through it. I talked to Lacey because I figured it might help to talk to someone. I shouldn't be here. At this point, I don't even care. How many times have things gotten better simply because a friend decided to sit beside us and just listen? We all need someone like G in our life, don't we? I'm so grateful I have someone like that. But anyway, then this happened. <laughs> Oh, are you okay, G? She slipped on a slick patch of oil, injuring her ankle. Oh, God. Anxiety rippled through the kitchen as the medic assessed the situation. The pain was evident, casting doubt on G's ability to tackle that night's service. Despite the discomfort, she resolved to press on with the prep work, brushing aside LA's valid concerns. What a champ. Just before the service kicked off, she bravely shared the news of her injury with Chef Ramsay, expressing her desire to soldier on and give it her all. The famous chef, understanding her determination, gave her the green light to participate. I'd like you to stay as well. As soon as the service ended, G hobbled back down to the hall for a second visit to the medic. Wrestling with the feeling of being a burden to her team, she was met with a chorus of encouragement from her teammates. All of them insisted that she had done remarkably well and deserved to stay. Despite her desire to remain on Hell's Kitchen, G recognized the weight of her injury. She foresaw it as a potential hurdle for the women's team for the rest of the competition. So, with unshakable resolve, she volunteered to step back and set her focus firmly on the team's triumph. Even as Andrea passionately championed G's abilities, G remained unswayed, holding firm in her belief that stepping aside was the right path for the red team's victory. In Chef Ramsay's signature fashion, he acknowledged G's talent while candidly admitting that pushing on while in severe pain wouldn't be just. Yet, he acknowledged G's immense courage and determination, allowing her to retain her chef's jacket as a symbol of her unwavering pride. As Andrea wheeled G out, this is what happened. Well, okay. Okay. Oh my god, goosebumps anyone? The bravery she displayed in embracing her limitations and prioritizing the team's well-being was nothing short of awe-inspiring. It's a true testament to the incredible spirit that defined her Hell's Kitchen journey. The universe has a cruel sense of humor because Colleen and Lacey? Those two were horrible and I can't help but wonder how far G would have gone if not for that injury. I mean, her cooking was just amazing. Cooked perfectly. Thank you, chef. She totally rocked the scallop challenge and knocked it out of the park with her signature dish. She was super down to earth and humble, which just made you root for her even more. Due to the circumstances, it's not fair to continue going oh, on up. under that amount of pain. Now, it's not just me. Viewers think G was an absolute powerhouse in the kitchen. Had it not been for that sprained ankle, she was definitely going to be a front runner for the title. Did you notice how Charlie holds the door? I know we've come to HK for the drama, but it's moments like these that make us stay. I can't wait for a new season. Speaking of which, who among these contestants I've covered so far would you like to make a comeback on the show? You can also drop all the names you can think of in the comments section down below. Well, we've seen this happen in the past, and who knows, your favorite contestant might just make it to the next season for a second run. Anyway, I think Chris's journey hit home in a really profound way. He'd been through some tough mental health struggles before, and being on the show, the stress, the intense services, everything was taking a toll on him. So, he made a tough call for himself and decided to step away, prioritizing his mental well-being. I feel like the longer I stay, the more it's going to progress in this darkness. What's really moving is how everyone handled it. Chris, first and foremost, recognizing his own needs and speaking up for himself, that takes a ton of courage. Like those feelings that like, I once felt that I've tried so hard to get away from, I feel like creeping on me again. Then you've got Christina, of course, and Chef Ramsay. They didn't brush it aside or make it seem less important. They understood, they respected his decision, and they showed some empathy. This tells us that it's okay to ask for help, to put ourselves first when we need to, and that support and empathy can make all the difference. 
In a world where mental health can sometimes be brushed aside, this situation stands out as a reminder that taking care of our minds is just as important as taking care of our bodies. If you're uncomfortable and you're feeling demons, then you need to go and get help. Remember that, guys, all right? But what happened with this next contestant was painfully heartbreaking. You see, Dave wasn't your average contestant. He was a real go-getter. During prep, he was in agony because of the pain that he was facing, but his spirit was unbreakable. He wanted to keep going even though he didn't know exactly what was wrong with his wrist. Now, sous chef Scott came in with the news that the doctor had the results. Dave rushed to the dorms to answer the call, and the news hit him like a ton of bricks. For a period of two weeks, you will not be able to move your thumb. His dreams of competing were in jeopardy, and he felt so crushed. But Dave wasn't one to give up easily. He made his way to Chef Ramsay's office and shared the devastating news. The famous chef knew that losing Dave would be a blow to the competition. Nothing could stop me. Okay, I think you made the right decision. We'll get the cast on. When he came back during the dinner service, though, he had a shiny new cast on his left arm. Chef Ramsay treated him like any other contestant and put him in charge of the desserts. And let me tell you this, Dave didn't skip a beat. I just jumped on desserts uh, and I busted out. He worked quickly, serving up his first round of sweets in record time, and Chef Ramsay couldn't help but be impressed. He's got one fucking hand in action, yeah, and he's working quicker than anyone. And this was the making of a true leader. No wonder people who have met him at his bakery vouch for this guy. What's more, Dave's quick thinking and sharp presence of mind saved the blue team's eighth service. During the dinner service, he was the man in charge of the fish station. Things were heating up and Andy, his teammate, suddenly found himself with an empty mashed potato pot. But did Dave panic? No way. He sprang into action and dashed to the pantry, snatching up a bunch of potatoes to whip up a fresh batch. What happened next was truly remarkable. Dave managed to whip up those mashed potatoes in record time and hustled them to the pass where the dishes were sent out to the hungry diners. Thanks to Dave's lightning speed, the blue team served up all of the remaining entrees. And boy, it was a game changer for them. One of the best performances came from Dave. You proved to me tonight that you're no fluke. For the finale, Dave chose a simple menu and executed it to perfection. The way he took control of his brigade and ran the pass, oh man, I don't know if there's ever been a chef more deserving of a win. Next up is the winner of season 16, Kimberly Ann Ryan. She was never nominated for elimination, but instead dominated during most services. But one thing that really sets her apart is her attitude. She's a winner in life. However, did you know that her journey post Hell's Kitchen wasn't easy? She took to Instagram to share her mental health struggles. She wrote, I had a beautiful expensive home, a coveted job, I was skinnier and prettier. Never been more miserable in my entire life. I was alone. I didn't have a family or a support system in Vegas. I was bullied constantly by people who are still in my life to just get it over with and kill myself. I never thought I'd see my kids again. I never thought I'd see my hometown again. I was broken, defeated, hopeless. The problem was that she felt guilty when people would ask her how her dream job was and how lucky she was because of it. But in reality, she was barely treading water. Fast forward to now, despite feeling bullied, she's still kicking. In the very same post, she went on to say how she now has the tools to shut down any shit thrown her way. After going through a lot of therapy, she's finally begun to see the light. Although she lives in a tiny one-room apartment and is broke as fuck, she says that she's never been happier. She ended her message by saying, I made it. I'm here. I'm learning and I'm growing. Y'all ain't never getting rid of me. I don't share this for pity or attention. I share it because you never know what someone else is going through. So why not choose kindness? Well said, Kim, and this is why I love her. Now, this next chef is my absolute favorite across every season. I'm gonna nominate myself, chef. I can't pick any of these guys. Rest in peace, legend. And I totally agree with what this viewer said. As far as Hell's Kitchen contestants go, Petroza strikes me as one of the very few contestants who would metaphorically or even literally jump on a grenade to protect others. Rarely do you come across someone as warm-hearted and selfless as Petroza. In the midst of a demanding dinner service, Petroza was stationed at the appetizer station, where his contributions would prove invaluable, especially when it came to helping his teammate Laras. Do you have another one that I can see a nice pink center in? Yeah, chef. Do you have another one with a nice pink center in it? 
Around an hour and a half into the service, Laros found himself in a predicament, having sent overcooked steaks to the pass. This mistake drew the stern attention of sous chef Scott, who was not one to tolerate errors lightly. Laros was frantically searching for perfectly cooked steaks to rectify the situation, but his efforts proved futile. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. Well, we, this is our only shot that we got. Petroza, showing true camaraderie and quick thinking, decided to step in and take a significant risk. He decided to trim off the burnt edges of the overcooked steaks, hoping to salvage the rest. This action was not without its doubts, and Petroza knew he had to be convincing. The steaks, no pun intended, were very high. However, the success of their dinner service hinged on his ability to pull this off. Much better. That was the most ghetto thing ever. Remarkably, Petroza's daring move actually paid off. He successfully deceived sous chef Scott into believing that the steaks were now acceptable somehow. This act both shocked and relieved Laros, who was undoubtedly in a tight spot. His willingness to take a bold and calculated risk to save Laros and the entire team from a disastrous situation demonstrated not only his culinary expertise, but also his unwavering support for his teammates. Petroza is synonymous with teamwork and leadership under pressure. Many, many viewers argue that he should have won season 4, and the only reason he didn't is because of his age. Huh, that never struck me before, so what are your thoughts? Now, surprise, surprise, look what we have here. I really don't think any of these comments were needed. You guys seem to be targeting me in a vicious fashion. Oh, you got something against me because I'm older? Or even warrant it. That's pathetic, dehumanizing, and plain and simple, he didn't deserve all that harassment. While Raj may not have held the title of the show's top chef, it's important to acknowledge that he put in the effort and, at the end of the day, he's a human being with feelings. Even his signature dish, despite its less than stellar presentation, had a surprisingly good taste. And hey, those aren't my words, Chef Ramsay said it himself. The reality is that Raj's talent shone when he served as a personal chef, but the rigid brigade system didn't really agree with him. The real, unfortunate twist was how his own teammates turned against him, creating an increasingly toxic atmosphere. Obvious examples include Vinny's sabotage. And oh, listen to what Sabrina had to say. But some people just cannot handle like being on camera. Like that, it's, it's just that environment is so crazy. It makes you think, Raja's real life situation must have been way different from what we saw on the show. He had important connections with fancy high-end restaurants in Los Angeles, and people in the industry actually respected him. But it's not like he had the chance to share any of that on the show. Sabrina's second point is pretty interesting as well. If Raj didn't like being on camera, it might mean he felt nervous in social situations. Not everyone feels comfortable in the spotlight, and that's totally okay. Reality TV is notorious for exploiting personalities for entertainment. And it really wouldn't shock me to know that the producers edited his personality out of context to make him the comedic relief, the punching bag. Disgusting! He's the chef, it's his opinion, and I have zero opinion. We like to poke fun at him for sticking his head in the freezer, but that might just be how he copes when he's overstimulated. Anybody else feel like this moment was really unfair? Come here you, if I tell you to get out there, I don't give a f if you got a thumb up your fat crack. Get out there! At first, there was a clear message that no Dover souls had been ordered. Raj likely took this information at face value. However, instead of acknowledging this, the blame was placed on him. This unfair treatment left Raj in a difficult position. What are you doing? Playing the odds? Maybe one will be good out of three. It's important to consider the confusion and mixed signals in the scenario. I've got three on order! Raj could reasonably argue that he acted based on the information provided to him, and it was not his fault that the situation turned chaotic. Plus, the dude knew how to have fun at work. He didn't really give in to pressure, but instead released his frustration by resorting to near-perfect karate moves. Sabrina, Andy, back in line. Jim, take your jacket off. What? He wasn't even nominated? Jim did not deserve to go home, and that's a hill I'd die on any day. Sure, his service wasn't top-notch, but compared to Andy and Sabrina, who single-handedly ruined the service, it was peanuts. Chef Ramsay claimed that Jim lacked passion, but honestly, I felt that he was just more laid back. It's like there's dead corpse inside. Show some emotion, will you? Or piss off. Justice for introverts. In the words of the season's winner himself, Chef Ramsay seems to pick on Jim, but I think Jim did a great job. Remember when he mentioned that he wouldn't change who he was for any job on his way out? Chef Ramsay wanted to see me give him back some fire, and that's just not me. So at the end of the day, when my head hits the pillow, I know that I never wavered on who I am. 
At first, I thought he meant Chef Ramsay's aggressive kitchen style, but now I'm thinking maybe it was the producers or directors pulling the strings. Apparently, he was eliminated because he refused to start a feud with Robert or Kevin. Yeah, that's the consensus among the HK community. If that's the case, I'm proud of you, my man. Jim, you were funny as hell, and I was definitely rooting for you, so justice for Jim. And if you're with me, then make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Oh, and how could I forget this? There was just scraps of meat just everywhere. It was a kitchen apocalypse, like a hand grenade went off in a cow's ass. <laughs> so iconic. Moving on, this has to be one of the most passionate pleas I've ever seen on the show. Since I've come on the blue team, Chef, I have improved. The first night of service, myself and Brian finished service on our own. And she's absolutely right about the Mexican night service. Again, you be the judge if the elimination was fair or not. Guy took charge of the ahi tuna in the blue kitchen, known for his expertise and vowed to never deliver subpar food. However, his initial attempt fell short as the tuna arrived cold at the pass. Touch that, stone cold. It's good, it's good. You wanna fucking argue? Bro, don't even argue, just put your head down and say yes chef. And also fix the mistake next time around. Then both Patrick and Guy, diving into their first attempt at fulfilling an entree order, face an immediate hiccup. Guy, who was now in charge of the steaks, unfortunately sent out a dish with one portion overcooked and the other distressingly dry. One just slightly overcooked and one that is dry. Clemenza knew Guy's capability in cooking a steak, having witnessed it countless times before. I can only imagine how baffled the guy was seeing Guy flounder so hard. We've all done this a million fucking times before. Chef Ramsay, meanwhile, directed his attention to Patrick, implying that Guy seemed to have thrown in the towel and instructed Patrick to take charge of the situation. You need to control it. You gotta start showing up now. Yes, Chef? So during their second attempt, Guy and Patrick coordinated their efforts in the kitchen. However, as Patrick placed his chicken back in the oven for an additional minute, Guy began slicing his steak. Ah, uh, shit, here we go again. Two chicken, how long? I have a chicken in the oven. It'll be one more minute, oh, Chef. I'm very sorry. I'm working on it. Yeah, fuck off, dude. Piss off. Guy blamed Patrick for it, accusing him of disrupting his rhythm in the kitchen. You told me to cut the steak. You didn't give me the right time. You told me it's ready, and it wasn't ready. Things were getting ugly. Chef Ramsay, witnessing the tension, made a decisive move, opting to remove both Guy and Patrick from the kitchen. Piss off. Now, as Clemenza got working on the pork, a crucial portion slipped his mind, requiring him to keep working for another two minutes. And we all know how much Chef Ramsay loves unexpected delays. One more pork, how long? Let him cook. Two more minutes on the pork. Oh, Talk come about. on. This is ready, ready. Amidst this, Justin made an impulsive decision to present the pork, despite Clemenza's objections. Justin, don't put out the fucking pork, don't put out the pork, it's not cooked. In Clemenza's defense, he was literally begging. But sadly, as feared, the dish turned out to be really overcooked and Chef Ramsay was not happy. So much so that he ejected both Clemenza and Justin from the kitchen without letting another second go by. Can I please get out? I just told you the pork's not cooked five motherfucking times. As the dinner dragged on for another solid two hours, it was becoming painfully clear. No main dish had even left the kitchen yet. Chef Ramsay got deadly serious with the blue team, warning them to shape up and stop the slip-ups or they'd have hell to pay. And then, in the middle of all this craziness, Chef Ramsay stumbled upon charred bits clinging to Royce's chicken. This led to Royce getting the boot from the kitchen and that was obvious. Chef Ramsay, looking more disappointed than angry, mentioned that it seemed like Royce couldn't handle the pressure of the job. How did that taste? A terrible chef. Get out! Royce was out, leaving Brian and Roshni as the last standing members of the blue team in the kitchen. The situation was bleak, and Roshni was really feeling it. But Chef Ramsay had no sympathy, and he laid down a serious ultimatum for the two. On my children's life, you fuck that table. That's it. That's it's history. Wow, that's scary. And apparently, just the right amount of motivation that they needed. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Either way, determined to turn things around, Brian and Roshni pulled themselves together and somehow pushed out the first batch of main dishes on their own. After finding their rhythm, they picked up steam and managed to finish the rest of the service too. Service, please. See, she did find her voice. How could her team have no faith in her after this? Now, even in the service that she was eliminated, her performance wasn't even that bad. She wasn't even nominated. Again, you be the judge and let me know your opinions. 
So, in the 8th service, Clemenza presented chewy pasta. And Chef Ramsay was so done with him. Pasta is fucking chewy! Yes, Chef! It's not fucking rocket science. On the blue team's front, they were hustling to fulfill Ortiz's order. This is something I have trained for. I am ready. Despite Brian's initial confidence, his risotto arrived at the pass in a soupy state, inviting Chef Ramsay's ire as he labeled Brian's actions as lazy for sending out a dish he knew wasn't up to par. A VVIP guest sat on the chef table and you serve them piss risotto. You know it's wrong when you send it. Fucking lazy. Simultaneously, Roshni faced a dual debacle serving both raw Wellingtons and overcooked steaks. And then this raw. A first fucking table. Like, split the difference and they'd be perfect. But the blue team was still struggling to get their first main dish out, and it was all made worse by Patrick serving up an ice-cold lobster. Royce wasn't impressed one bit, and called him out for looking completely clueless. Patrick, what the fuck are you doing? It's like you've never cooked fucking before. Come on. While Chef Ramsay laid down the law on both teams, Roshni actually geared up and made a comeback. Two hours in, contrasting scenes unfolded between the red and blue teams. The red team hustling to deliver their entrees was looking good, while the blue team was still grappling with their initial ticket. Cold lobster for the second time tonight, I swear to God. However, Fade had other plans as his second attempt landed on Chef Ramsay's plate raw once again. This critical error proved to be the breaking point as Chef Ramsay, left with no tolerance for further mishaps, promptly ejected the entire blue team from the kitchen. I'll do it on my own. Get out. Get out. As they made their way back to the dorms, Clemenza couldn't mask his frustration, feeling agitated by yet another loss for the blue team. Alrighty, so now that you've seen everything, who should go home here? See, Roshni dodged the initial elimination nomination, but found herself summoned alongside Patrick after Chef Ramsay overruled the team's initial choices of Brian and Clemenza. In her plea to stay, she highlighted her growth. The first night of service, myself and Brian finished service on our own. And I'm a team player. I'm honest, loyal, and dedicated. However, when it came down to the wire, most of the safe male contestants leaned towards sending her home. Roshni, Chef. Royce. Patrick, Chef. This did not sit well with her and she didn't hold back. She reminded Clemenza, Justin, and Brian about how she stood her ground when most of them were ejected from the service. And she called them all out for choosing to eliminate her over Patrick. You guys all got kicked out of that kitchen. Myself and Brian finished that service. Damn, she's such a fighter. The red team at least acknowledged that. But despite her impassioned plea, Roshni faced elimination as everyone seemed to turn their back on her. In her exit interview, she was so disappointed, and I agree with everything that she said. I never got involved in all the bullshit. I was here for a purpose. I just don't think I got enough time to prove it. Oh man, this girl bared her soul in her plea to stay and literally poured her heart out. Do you think she should have at least been given another chance? I definitely think so. She was 100% robbed. Moving on, raise your hand if you think LA was unfairly eliminated over Carol. All Carol did was continue her squabble with Andrea for one more episode. On the red team that night, Carol stood out as the weakest link, causing a ripple effect that impacted LA's garnish station. Despite Carol's misstep on the meat station, LA shouldered the blame for the slip-ups, taking one for the team. As the red team began sending out their entrees, Carol announced a 5-minute delay for her first Wellington. Chef Ramsay, puzzled by the delay, questioned Carol about the convection oven. What's your oven on? Right now it's at 400. Ramp it up to 500 then, I don't care. Andrea, expressing reservations, voiced concerns about Carol's ability to handle the meat station. I definitely had concerns about Carol being on meat station. Are you ditzy? No, I don't want to burn the rest of them. Carol defended her actions, expressing worries about the Wellingtons burning. Ramsey, completely unimpressed, criticized her and cautioned Paula about the team's potential trouble due to Carol's actions. She backed up and she's acting ditzy. I'm warning you now, we're going to be in the we don't start getting this stuff done. Then again, as expected, Carol faced the heat as her Wellingtons arrived cold, prompting her to pledge to Chef Ramsay that she'd pull herself together. However, Andrea remained skeptical about Carol's commitment and attempted to coordinate timings with her. Frustratingly, Carol remained silent, ignoring Andrea's attempts at communication. Let me know what's up. Can I go? Do you have your sauce? Can I go or not? No fucking answer. Tensions escalated when Carol unexpectedly brought up the lamb without warning, leaving Andrea even more agitated. Behind you, right behind you. She's not even ready. Coming with my lamb right now. Where is it, Chudori? 
When Chef Ramsay called for the John Dory, Andrea swiftly sent it up. Unfortunately, the dish was a disappointment, overcooked and unpleasantly rubbery. Touch! It's overcooked. Jesus! This blunder led Andrea to squarely blame Carol for sinking her performance. I was never told by Carol, you know, a certain amount of time, and my Dory sat there for way too long. In response, Carol coldly deflected the responsibility, asserting that it was Andrea's job to prepare a fresh one. She had plenty of time, so to blame me for that is just, I mean, ridiculous. Carol, please, you are being ridiculous. First, the complete lack of communication, and now this? But despite the evident lack of communication and understanding between Andrea and Carol, the red team managed to push out their entrees. Their success, however, was short-lived. Requested medium, it's still too pink, so look. Under five, two medium. Yeah, Carol, lamb back. Jean-Philippe's return with Carol's undercooked lamb dishes stirred Chef Ramsay's frustration a ton. Oh yeah, you gonna blame the oven this time? Or are you gonna blame the cheese? Attempting to salvage the situation, Carol sliced into her Wellingtons, hoping for the best, only to find them undercooked. Please be well done, baby. Please, I'm begging you. Oh my god. Realizing the error, Carol instructed LA to slow down on the garnishes to compensate for the undercooked meat. However, this decision left LA flustered and she had every right to be angry. I was sitting there ready to roll and you know, Carol just got freaked out and scared and she just lost it. While Carol understood that her actions were causing LA's frustration, she felt that she had no other viable choice. I know LA was quite frustrated with me because I kept changing the time on her. You know, what else are you gonna do? Yeah, that's not someone I'd want on my team. All of this caused LA to serve up cold mashed potatoes, drawing Chef Ramsay's ire. Stone cold, come on, that's not good enough. Bland, cold, horrible mashed potato. Then Chef Ramsay's quest for the chicken led to a little hiccup when Carol couldn't find it anywhere, suspecting it had vanished before her very eyes. Where's the chicken? My f***ing face. Sorry about the time, yeah? This is nail broke. Huh, that's two disappearing chickens now. Anyway, Chef Ramsay informed the red team that three blue team chefs had already completed their last order, whereas five chefs were still waiting on Carol's lap. Now, during elimination seeking consensus within the red team, Chef Ramsay inquired if they'd reach a decision. Carol asserted that they hadn't, but Paula revealed a sort of consensus that had been reached. However, Chef Ramsay, clearly frustrated, dismissed Paula's attempts, mentioning that he wasn't in the mood. The discussion turned to the nominees, with LA nominated as the red team's first choice and Carol as the second. Chef Ramsay probed further, questioning if Andrea was considered. Did anybody nominate Andrea? I did, Chef. I did too, Chef. Displeased with the team's lack of cohesion, he summoned the three women to the forefront. During their pleas, Andrea rated her performance at a 6, citing communication issues with Carol and the challenge of firing three John Dorys to catch up. Chef Ramsay prodded Andrea for her opinion on who should leave. That's when she suggested LA due to Carol's potential to take the lead. Then, Chef Ramsay pointed out the discord between Andrea and Carol's work dynamic, with Carol defending their differing work styles. The famous chef questioned Carol about the kitchen she worked in that night, indicating a lack of noticeable impact. LA did defend her cooking skills, feeling that her nomination was unjust. They think that I can't run a kitchen because I don't yell and because I don't show emotion on the line. That's bullshit. However, after deliberation, Chef Ramsay sent Carol and Andrea back in line, ultimately eliminating LA. And what was her reaction? I'm big on not showing emotions in a kitchen. Emotions are weakness, and I will never be weak. You go, girl. So, who else do you think was unfairly eliminated on the show? Let me know in the comments section down below, because I know far, far too many people have been robbed over the years. And if you like my video, make sure to check out this next one right here.